we're going to get our niece's boyfriend's trailer because they're moving closer to each other. It's a love story. Might be an endeavor of blown tires and dropped axles, panels flying off of the trailer. Ron's truck is right here. It's still here. We're in the little garage. It's hot as a son of a gun outside. Am I always bitching about stuff? Okay, we had to take the freaking fender well out to get to the damn dryer because it's under there. The crank sensor worked. This thing fired right up. It was all good. So now we're taking these leveling blocks off. The bolts here that came with the leveling kit and now we have to find the factory bolts because they're going to be two inches shorter. If we cure this death wobble, it's our last thing that we can get on runs. But I wanted to get this done. So the crank sensor jumped in. It's done all by itself. It was, it was done quick. This leveling kit, I just have to take it all the way apart and I don't have all, all the tools are way back in the backyard, so I haven't, we'll get them up here soon, but I need a little ratchet for that. But for now, let's take this off and see if I can spin it. Well, I tried to just spin the plate. Let's see if I knock the truck over. Maybe I can beat it with a hammer. When you got some junk leveling kits on and dissimilar metals happens you wind up having to cut the freaking cheesy little allen bolts off of the leveling kit it's not a bad idea to have a massive bone yard of crap like these that is the same bolt because you can no longer use the bolt when you put the ride height back to factory so hopefully you kept your bolt years and years ago when you put the leveling kit on because you're gonna want it it wouldn't come out so i wound up we tried to spin the whole thing together like this with it sitting on there like that try to spin the whole thing to get the long bolt to uh come out it, nothing so i resorted to just cutting it now we got metal everywhere we've got to wash all this metal off we got the crank sensor in and now the leveling kit is going to be gone so that project is almost done All right, I got the crank sensor truck done and I got the leveling kit off and it was actually kind of a pain in the freaking butt. We're going to a death wobble spot right now, see if we can get a death wobble out of it. Let's just go ahead and get in it. There you go. There you go, I'm in it. Okay, that was a good little run. It's been parked for a little while. We actually had to jump the batteries. They were, weren't dead, but not, not enough to start it, so thing out and run it this is this truck's been around for a long time i've sold this truck uh, once <laughs> and bought it twice <laughs> all right right around this area is death wobble area it's an 05 so no check engine light it's got our intake and everything on it very nice truck i like to run down here and hit these two clover leaves that way i don't have any stop lights and i can roll right on and come right back these tires are shot from riding with the geometry they've had they're just shot they're i can feel them when i'm driving straight and they got a little washboard going on with them like like belts are starting to turn these michelin a22s are great until they get old just time i put 170,000 miles on one set before not a joke i have then i blew one out but it had the tread it had about as much tread that these tires have not bald at all they will blow before they wear all the tread out in slow motion i felt a little bit a little hint of it that little bump right there at the end at death wobble every single time right there and i felt it start to shake a little probably if we get these tires where they're nice and flat tendency is to slam on the brakes and this truck actually suffered from getting the brake calipers locked up from slamming on the brakes too hard because you had death wobble so you want to talk about symptoms rolling downstream go ahead and put this truck back in service and call it uh drive cautiously charge batteries up a little bit this has a titan tank in it too so we've got crap loads of fuel 
So I just took off in the lift gate and uh, true to fashion, I thought it was a tire messed up. Can you smell it? it smells like brakes. So, hey guys, Sansa here, Super Service. Got your locked up brakes and your front end's hopping around all over the place. <laughs> Sitting here looking at Ron's truck, getting ready to explore. It sets you on the steering wheel. That's what happens when you hit it harder. Oh. Get out of here. Get. I'm scared. Get out of here. Say bye bye. All right. Opening the hood on it after like not looking at it for a while, it's freaking beautiful I'm gonna get all of this out of the way I know a lot of you would say just get in there and do a Fickham harness no do you see this do you see how this looks there is no just jump right in and do a Fickham harness I mean you, you might be able to put one in anybody can put one in yeah you can shoot horn rats ass that son of a bitch in there but in order to put it in and make it look like or be ready to put it in and make it look like it's good I want to be able to swap it fast. So I want to stand in here. We still got some brake bleeding. We got to bleed the brakes and a couple other, th what else? I don't know what else we got. Oh, AC condenser too. AC condenser has got to go. So the AC is not charged yet, which is perfect. So, you know, even though the AC condenser comes off pretty easy, but it's going to make this diag a lot easier because I can run with no belt, no fan, no AC compressor, none of that stuff even hooked up. Bang a new harness on it real quick. I can do all, just start it, shut it off. Yeah, it'll make Diag really easy uh, is to expose it. So I'm still trying to justify it because in my mind, I'd rather just have a predefined amount of things to do, um, steps that will get us to the solution or to, you know, anything. So I'm just going through my head. I'm glad I don't have a, a whole bunch of overhead going right now you know i can just take my time with it we're going to strip it all the way down as if it's like an like a new build kind of take it apart that way when we put it all back together i'm gonna work my way back out and it god dang better look exactly how it looks right now that's what i'm going for because going down to the engine harness and um yeah, I mean, because where the engine harness and the Fickham harness snap together under the turbo down there, there's push pin, push pin on each harness that go together. Um, I mean, you can get in there and get it apart, I guess. But my what I'm doing when I'm taking this front end apart is hoping, well, I'm gambling that it's not any of the easy stuff and we're going to wind up with the engine out. So... I mean, that that process will make Diag a lot easier. That will make us determine the engine out. And it's very easy to put it back together. I mean, it's it's very easy to strip all this apart and then put it all back together. It's, and and you can, we can run it. We can test it. Because this, this does it so consistent that 1300 RPM, it's done. It'll, it's it's uh, very consistent every time. So we fire this thing up. I get a different harness on it and I fire it up let it run for enough to get oil to run through. I don't have to let it warm up or anything and just give it a little throttle. We'll know instantly. And if that's the case and we get all fat and happy, then I could throw this sucker back together. And I don't know, I, you know, if I'm, if I'm just going, it's probably, I don't know, an hour maybe of uh, tearing it apart, putting it back together. Me and Julie 
have swung an engine out the front without taking the cab off in four hours before. We've done that before. So uh, just taking the front end apart is, I mean, maybe an hour. You know, five and a half, 10 millimeter. I need the bent screwdriver and the pushpin puller. I just unplugged the mass airflow, the alternator, EGR valve, EGT solenoid, the map sensor. Anything that's got more than three wires, I unplug. Fan clutch. All right, unplug all that stuff. Now, we started it. Let's see what happens, because it just died. Let's see if it does it again. You ready? Go. This is chatter. All right, yeah. Hmm. Okay, kill key. It should run with all of this disconnected. Um, yeah. That's concerning. Okay, so it's not running. So let's try it. Let me plug back in the alternator and see for some reason if it's not getting enough power because the alternator is not. But it should have enough power. That should not be it. All right, uh, try it again. Got the alternator plugged in now. Yeah. Okay, so it's not the alternator. Yeah. Hmm. Did for some reason, because <laughs> that's what fuel inertia switch sounds like. Okay, try it again. One would assume that this would be our culprit. Key off. Wow, I don't quite know what the heck is going on here. Actually, let's just go back and revert back and put, plug in the map sensor and plug in everything and see if we just got something, what, what, what just happened here. Uh, what else did I unplug? Hmm. All right. Uh, go for it again. Oh, VGT, hang on. Key off. Even though VGT does not need to be plugged in for it to run. I'm, I'm leaving it unplugged. Go for it. Try to unplug that right now. All right, what happened? Try it. Grab it up. All right, so we're not looking at that. All right, kill it. Hmm. That was checking like a reference voltage or a sensor shorted out, something internally. Uh, it was very weird that it wasn't firing though. Try it again, try it, uh, well, yeah, try it now. I got, see if it starts and dies. We'll see if it's a map sensor. I can't, I... Okay, 
Okay, turn it off. All right, go for it. Now we're back to the same conditions we were, except the alternator's plugged in. Okay, so the map sensor. Try it again. Okay, everything's still unplugged except map and alternator. Try it. Kind of at a loss. I've been taking breaks quite a bit from here. It's freaking beautiful. It's, 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 it's whatever it is that we, we, we'll find it. I mean, whatever it is, that doesn't make it easy right now, but in the future we can look back hopefully and say, damn, duh. Take a break for a minute. Come out and light a bonfire. Burn a bunch of stuff. Trying to decide if we are going to keep the scrap van or not. I don't know. Uh, my first thought is that if it has sagged, oh, it has over there. Yeah, it's separated pretty good. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I kind of like it. Uh, take all the front chassis stuff out, take all these springs out so it's just the frame up there, and we'll be dragging the fender on crap. But the doors work. But we don't have latches for those back there. I would go get latches for them. That axle can take a crap load of, work, of, of weight. That can. And especially when I transfer the weight all the way over to here. Let's see if this separated. Well. I don't know. Right down here. I don't know what's going on with that. That looks like it actually did break. Okay, so that's a broke weld right there, isn't it? Fucker down there, so it's barely holding on. <laughs> okay, so should we keep it or should we just take the whole van to the scrapper? Just let the whole van go? I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Back out here. It's a big one. <laughs> 